Hey guys, in today's video we're carrying out a full lawn renovation on this lawn. I want to show you around. It gets quite a lot of shade in winter, especially along that back edge. And customer did actually do some overseeding last year because it had gone really mossy and thin. And it has gone mossy and thin once again. I mean, you can see now where the shade comes down. You can see the shadow on the fence and we're only early spring. But in winter, you know, this shade's just going to cast all the way across. So your best chance is going to be at this top end, and then the worst is going to be down here. So you can see lots of moss in there. So we're going to go really heavy on the scarifying, get as much of that out as we can. We're going to aerate, we're going to overseed, we're going to top dress. There are a few weeds in the lawn, customer's quite happy just to have a nice lawn. So that's absolutely fine. If he wants to tackle weeds at any point, a simple feed and weed in a few months' time, we'll do it the world of good. So, we've got the tools of the trade. What I've noticed is there's a little bit, not much, a little bit of speedwell in there, which is hard to kill. Which is this one. And there's just a couple of bits over there and dotted around. So I'm going to try and get those out first, as best we can, and, uh, and then we'll crack on. Now, you can either just pull these out, but you've got to try and get all the roots out, so... Usually you try and dig and get as much out as you can, but with any difficult weeds, it's difficult for a reason. So you need to get as much of it as you possibly can. So I think we've got pretty much everything out there, but we've also got quite a bit of soil. So my plan is to try and put as much of the soil back as possible. And that's pretty much just a bed seed of moss. But we've got the speedwell there. And this is called Germander speedwell. Now we've also got a bit of weed grass here. So it's a similar sort of thing. Just try and tease it up. Now this actually wasn't part of the planned renovation but while I'm here so we've got a bit of a weed grass there some decent roots on this one give it a shake and we've got the speed well in there Again, now I haven't actually brought any topsoil with me. If I had, I could have filled these holes in quite easily. That's why I'm trying to get the excess soil off first. So it'll remain pretty much flat once it's all done. Right, I'm going to crack on. weeds and uh, you notice this corner here looks quite damaged and I thought to myself it could be leather jackets and I actually saw one somewhere up there but I can't find it now how about that look what I found here one leather jacket So there is some leather jacket activity. What I'm going to do 
I'm going to put some turf salve on and hopefully that will have a bit of an effect. Um, also, because it's quite clay soil, it's quite damp and, and soggy, although it's still firm enough to walk on. When I've aerated, I'm going to put some gypsum down the holes as well. So then it will drain a little bit better, perform a little bit better. We can't help or change the shade, the issues with the shade, other than getting lower fences. So the customer will just have to uh, work on that fact and, and just basically accept a bit of overseeding every single year. But yeah, so that is it, that is the plan. So I'm gonna crack on. Down to the knuckle. That's pretty good. Another leather jacket here. Aeration can actually kill some of these as well. A machine at all. It's the clearing up. But the benefit you get from it is totally worth it. It's always worth cleaning the wheels because when you run over the drive and take everything back to your van, you leave you're left with lines of mud which are really hard to scrape off your drive. And you can't get everything, but you can use your gloves and just scrape with your fingernails and get as much off as humanly possible. Because we all want happy customers and a happy partner. Happy partner, happy life. See what I mean? There, that line of mud. And it's hard to get off unless you've got a scraper. So the next thing I want to do is actually scarify the lawn, which is just a posh word for saying raking the lawn. A lot of people will disagree, but it's just a word, and I'm trying to emphasise what it does. So if you were to get a garden rake, the one with the metal springy ones, and you rake the lawn continuously, it's going to start dragging out bits of moss and bits of thatch and dead matter. This does the same, and sometimes a cheap scarifiers will have little metal spro spokes on it which is the same as the little handheld rakes and then when you get to the more powerful ones you get blades and the blades cut in a little deeper so they're a bit more aggressive but they get more out in the same sort of time so this is what i'm going to do with this now i'm going to run around with the scarifier or not run and uh, see how much we can take out then we'll get everything cleared up and then we're going to get something on for the uh, for the grubs. I just like to lift up 
the back flap a little bit. Not too high because if we hit any stones, they're going to fly out, hit you on the legs or potentially smash customers' windows, which we don't want. So just halfway down, you can even use a bungee cord just onto the bottom of here and tie it up until your handle. So you've got different heights, or shall we say, different depths of the blade. The blades which are spinning around, they can go deeper into the ground or higher. You want them so the blades are just scraping the surface of the soil. Because all the thatch and moss is above the surface of the soil. And by using this, we also put grooves in, like a farmer's field, which helps when you want to sow your seeds. So let's crack on. So this is made by um, Viking, which is actually a sub-brand of Still, S-T-I-H-L. Um, they've now stopped making the Viking brand, and they've rebranded again under Still. So all future versions of this are orange in colour, orange and white, just like my mower. Um, yeah, just like my mower, and also just like my strimmer. And my chainsaw and my hedge cutters. I don't have any affiliation with Still, but I just find the quality to be good. And it's it's a workhorse. So, we start off, this is the height or lowering adjustment. You've got one down to six. One is the highest setting, so it's just scraping. So we start off on one, which we always do. Engage, and then pull the pull cord. And then we go forwards and see what it's like and how much it's taking out. So let's do that now. Now, just for reference, the blades are here in this section there. So if you are near to any edging stones, you've got to think that the blades are spinning around at about this sort of point. Between them two points there. So anything inside there, you don't want it going onto your patio. Now we adjust the height, like I say, with this handle here. We're on number one, and when we're ready to use it, this handle here, we push across and we lower it down to engage. Now that's perfectly fine. That's scarifying nicely. We've got a good depth of grooves and moss and material is coming out. What we're doing is thinning the moss, thinning the thatch. You don't take it all out, but you thin it. And if we're going two directions, we can thin it really well. So I'm gonna carry on with this. been over it two times now if we look at this corner here typical corner on a lawn even if we get the wheels right up there the blades are in this section here and it might not get fully into the corner definitely the holotine aerator machine i use wouldn't have not reached so usually depending on how far the lawn is away from the corner you sometimes have to do these bits by hand so, you can use your garden rake with the metal spokes and just give it a bit of a rake, or you can use one of these wolf garden tools. You have to buy the handle, and then you can buy all sorts of manner of... You can buy all manner of things to go in the end. Now, this is the scarifying head, and you press the red button and change it. And there's all sorts of things on here, uh, rakes... All sorts of things. So basically a 10-year warranty. And you just literally pull it backwards and forwards. And that is raking all that moss out very effectively. 
So you've definitely got corners and sometimes the long edges, depending on how far the wheel of your machine was across. I tried to get the wheel to go on these bricks, but because the grass was a little bit up and down, it, it would have made it a bit funny. So sometimes you have to go around the edges as well. And I'm just sort of angling it up a bit. So the end two or three blades are just scraping into the soil there. So that's that. And then finally, aeration. You can use your garden fork or you can get a manual holotine aerator. There are budget ones, okay? 20, 30, 40 pounds. And they're fine. Then you can pay more and get something like this. This is from J&J. &J. I'll leave a link in the description. But these have all got replaceable tines on here. In fact, there's two or three that I've reviewed on this channel, so I'll link to all of those. And basically, the soil gets pushed up and hits this little ridge here and ejects out. But they all clog. They all clog from time to time. But the idea is, the next time you push it in, it goes in, pushes that one up. Right here, it comes up, pushes that up, hits this slope and falls out. But like I say, sometimes they just clog because the soil's really sticky. So they can all clog. You can spray WD-40 inside the tines. And the good thing about these is you can replace the tines when they get blunt or they break. You've got these little things here. So they should technically last a lifetime. They just push down. Now I can feel I'm hitting something hard here. So that won't help. But there we go. And you see two pushes there, you can see exactly what's happening. And this is quite thick clay soil. Yeah, look how clay that is. It's really sticky. Yeah, so I've just pushed down on the soil. You can see on these ones here, that the next time I pushed into the ground, this is the soil that came out. And this one's starting to hit this ramp here. And that one there, it comes up, it starts to hit the ramp. So if, if I don't touch this, right, wait till we do the next one and just see. So the top bit should push out. Yeah? You see, that one's pushed out there and that one's pushed out there. But like I say, it doesn't always work perfectly. But it's a tool to aerate your ground, improve drainage and relieve compaction. So I'm going to crack on with these two tools and just make sure I've covered every areas, corners, along edges and around the manhole cover. And then after that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this cleared up and then I'm going to physically look at the lawn for any areas where I might need to just cover by hand. So let's crack on. what are called heavy duty or industrial leaf grabbers you can get similar cheaper versions of these for probably 20 25 quid i don't know these are about 50 60 quid at the minute um but the others they tend to bend where this metal joint is because it's quite thin metal and then it puts the two paddles out of a line and stuff tends to fall out the bottom but I've had these for years so it's worth if you're going to be doing it a lot or regular it's worth getting slightly better ones but if you go with the cheaper ones try not to pick wet grass or lots of soil up because that's what will cause them to break. 
Wait until you've got a good day where everything is nice and dry. So it's looking pretty well at the minute. It's looking like it's scarified well. I've been over twice. I've gone around the edges. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to eyeball areas where it's where the scarifier, because of the undulations in the ground, where the scarifier hasn't been able to catch any moss. And those bits we'll just do by hand. But it wasn't easy to see until we'd cleared up. And it's worth spending another 10 minutes now just having a walk round. Because at the end of the day, that bit of moss is going to be in your nice new lawn. I'm talking of moss, because it's getting warmer, the moss is just going to die off anyway. Because moss needs damp and shade. So I wouldn't worry too much where you've got your grooves and bits of moss. It's when you've got a big clump of moss, you want to thin it out. So it all looks pretty good up here and even here there's like a, a row of moss here so I think it sort of dips a bit it didn't quite catch it too good although it has been thinned because I can see the grooves and then because I went in two directions it did a good job but I am just gonna just tease a bit more out Because the more grooves, the more seeds you can get in. See, that bit's okay. But there's just a little bit here as well. And that's literally it. Oh, that's fine. Yes, it's a little bit thick here. So, I'm happy with this. Everywhere I look, I can see grooves in the soil. Now, when you scarify your lawn on a regular basis, it doesn't look like this. It looks nice and green, but a little bit rough. And then within a few weeks, it's come back and looking lovely. This has had a heavy, heavy scarify, a heavy renovation. And it needs it, because there was a lot of moss which had accumulated, and clay soil... So we've aerated to try and improve drainage. So the next steps now, I'm gonna put some pre-seed fertilizer on and I'm gonna put some granular gypsum down on the lawn. Then we're gonna do some overseeding, then we're gonna to top dress and then we're gonna put some turf soil on at the end. And now we've done all the ripping out, it's time to rebuild. And this is the first part, putting some good nutrients into the ground. Right, so now we'll get some gypsum. What gypsum does, it helps to flocculate soil. Now flocculate basically means it makes small soil particles combine with each other to form big soil particles. And what that means is that then creates little 
microscopic channels in and around those bigger particles and that improves drainage so water can get down the exchange of air oxygen and nutrients can all get down so it improves drainage it's really good for clay soil So this is a Horrell's grass seed. There are many different types. For most lawns, I would say just use a general amenity seed. And as you can see here, amenity. I don't know if you can see that, but it says amenity. It's because it's got a good blend of the most common cultivars and it can handle lots of different situations. So. That's what we're going to do. So how do we put seed on there? You can use a drop spreader like this. You push it along. It's a very accurate. It drops out the bottom and it falls out sort of between my hands onto the floor at a good rate. You can use a mini handheld broadcast spreader. So you turn the handle and the seeds fly out comes out fast although shaded seeds which are generally smaller if i'm right i can't remember now i haven't used a specific one for a while but the the smaller ones are a lot lighter and they don't fall out as easily but with a drop spreader they come out nice and even every single time and it's a lot more accurate or you can just scatter by hand so you're scattering by hand you just keep moving your hands backwards and forwards and across the lawn like so if it's in one of these you put your set in to the biggest hole size so when you turn this opens the hole and they come out of the bottom now this is the fastest way but you risk seeds going into borders um, and in between stones, which is not going not gonna to be easy, really, because then you've got to pick those out at a later point. But if you're careful, you can get most of your lawn done like this and just do the little corners by hand. And in general, squeeze the trigger. And there we go. Now for the drop spreader. You literally just line it up and I put the wheel right on the edge of the lawn there and as I walk along I'll squeeze this trigger here and they will drop out the bottom but even on its maximum setting which is the widest hole size it doesn't come out as heavy as I would like so I end up usually going over the lawn twice with this that's why I personally prefer to use this because it gets the job done a lot faster but for accuracy, especially on windy days, you can't go wrong with a drop spreader. And I just walk around alone. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to get this done now and uh, we'll see you on the next step. <laughs> We could leave it like this and some of the seeds will germinate but some won't some will get blown away and a lot will get eaten by the birds 
So what I like to do is cover the seeds with a bit of compost. You can use topsoil. Today I'm using compost and most of the time I use compost because we're getting some organic goodness into the ground. So there's many ways you can do it. And you're better off wearing your gloves for this. But you can literally just get some between your hands, you want the really fine stuff, and just rub it. So there's a nice thin layer across the seeds. Try and cover as many seeds as you can. That's that. The next step is to pour it all out into a pile and use a brush or a root and use a broom or the back of a long rake and work it across the garden and that will also spread it across. Or you can use a lawn levelling loot but that can sometimes drag the seeds around. One other thing I like to use is a compost spreader. It accurately puts the compost on the ground and it just makes life so much easier and that's what it's all about. I've just noticed a few seeds there. I don't want them germinating in there. Okay, so I'll get the compost spreader. So my aim is just to get an even coverage of maybe half a centimetre to a centimetre across the whole lawn. So the seeds will all germinate at the same sort of rate and come up through. It doesn't always work out that way. Now this compost I use, it's not the cheapest. And I'll give you some uh, information about this compost because it is really good stuff, very nice and fine and there's information on my website about this so I'll leave a link to that. However, on a budget end, there are composts from B&Q, Wix, um, Wix own brand I've used, B&Q, Verve in purple bags I've used, both contain little twigs and things like that the one i also like is the grow more brand from places like home bargains and that's pretty good it's a close second to this i like this stuff because it's good stuff and it also comes to me on a pallet and uh over a, a few years before using this, because I've been using this now for two, at least two years, possibly three, and it comes delivered on a pallet. Now, before, I would have to go to Home Bargains and order about 80 or 100 bags of compost, and I'd get some funny looks, but then they'd get it set up on a pallet, and I'd drive my van round the back, and they help me load it into my van, which is fine, but it's just another thing you've got to do. So I prefer to use this. You just push. And that's as easy as it is. A nice even coverage. And we just push across the seed. So I'm going to carry on with this. And I'll bring you guys back. Yeah, that looks pretty. 
pretty good, doesn't it? It's looking good. So, that is fine. You could leave it at this point, walk away and just keep watering, and you'll have a, a better chance of a better outcome. Because the seeds are covered, the birds can't get to the vast majority, and any rain is unlikely to wash them away unless it's really torrential. So we're starting to improve chances. But what you find in some areas, some of the existing grasses are smothered by thick pieces of compost. So we need to sort of just rub it a bit. Yeah, and when you rub it, it sort of works the compost down in between the blades of grass. You can use a brush, you can use your hands, um, the back of a rake, or even a lawn levelling loot, which I'm going to use now. And all I do with this, I just drag it up and down. But areas where I know where there's literally no grass, I am a bit careful because it can sometimes drag the seeds. But it's mainly just those corners, really, and along that edge over there. So, literally, you just start at one edge, pop it down, and start walking. And that's going to knock it off the top of the grass and work it down. So here, I'm sort of half lifting it a bit. So it's only just a very slight amount. So it's all common sense stuff. And every one of these steps that you add in improves the germination rate and how well the grass actually comes out. Comes up, comes out, comes in. Whatever you want to call it. So what you might want to do, you can do it now or you can do it at the end, is to clear any compost that's gone onto the, the paving at the sides. Either a brush or a very gentle blow with the blower because you don't want to start blowing the seeds around. I'm going to do the compost rolling first. And just be careful when you turn the roller because it churns the seed and compost mix and can sometimes move them out of position. But what we're doing now, we're getting good seed to soil contact because we're pressing everything in remember those grooves were made with the scarifier well now with this roller it's pushing the seeds so it's touching the soil better and that flattens those grooves and as it flattens those grooves everything's squashed together so we're getting good seed to soil contact Right, I'll carry on with this, and then we'll move on to the next step. So you could say that is it, quite happily now. The key is to keep it watered two or three times a day in current temperatures around 18, 19, 20 degrees. We need to keep the seeds damp and stop them from drying out. It's really important. Um, I'm going to spray some of my emerald green on because it helps to hold water around the roots. And that's really important as the seeds are germinating because we don't want them to dry out. If we miss a bit of watering, this will help hold root water around that area. So I'm going to put some of my emerald green on, but first I'm going to put some turf solve on, which will help to deal with the grubs. So I'm going to get that and I'll get these sprayed on now. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some turf solve.
Right, so, um, all we've got to do now is water it in. So the likes of Turf Solve and Emerald Green are both available on my website. So in terms of watering in, Get your hose pipe ready. Now in an ideal world you would not stand on the lawn. So what we've got it's like rain coming down and that is absolutely perfect what you don't want is a jet pointing down because that could be a heavy jet of water which might just move some of the seeds around so what we're looking for is enough to water everything in and get it in and down to the roots so between five and ten minutes and at this time of the year you need to be watering two to three times a day for the next four weeks and by that point most of the seed should have come up and it will come up in patches and you'll think it hasn't worked in certain areas but give it time because the other seeds will come up Ideally, don't stand on the lawn. Don't use a sprinkler for the first few weeks because you don't want to be going on it. And also, your hose pipe could drag across the floor and that can drag some of the seeds around as well. So that's it, that is it, uh, step by step of renovating your own lawn, refreshing your lawn, making your lawn nice and new once again, after it's gone a bit tired, after it's gained a lot of moss. This is half a day's work with all the machines, but even if it took you a full weekend, you're going to enjoy your lawn for the rest of the year. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So you don't want the seeds to dry out and you don't want to cause big puddles, puddles. You don't want to cause big puddles of water. So you just want to keep moving your sprayer and keeping things nice and damp for the next month and once it has all come through then you need to still be watering at least once a week for the rest of the summer because it's going to get very hot and even though the grass will look nice on the surface what you'll find is that the roots are still shallow because it's not fully established so it can easily keel over and die off but it's all about initial care for the next four weeks and then ongoing care for the rest of summer and during the rest of summer, keep your hat, keep your... And during the rest of summer, don't cut it too short. Give it chance. The longer the blade of grass, the longer the roots can develop. So you're looking between one and two inches for the rest of this year. Right, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.